go, but it's not, so here we are. What's up, y'all? And welcome to another episode of Joe Fix It Vids. What I have behind me is an Amanda dryer that has stopped working. Well, not completely, but it does have some issues. So follow along as we troubleshoot and see what's going on with this dryer. Let's go. So we do have a couple of issues with this dryer and I'm going to show you how to fix one of them in this video. Stay tuned for a part two of this video. I'll show you how to fix the other part. But for now, let me show you what it's doing or what it's not doing. Follow me now. So, you throw your clothes in the dryer, you set your timer, you hit the start button. Sounds like it's all good, kind of. But it's not because we're not getting no spin here. But let me show you. Timer set. We'll hit this little tab right here. Little magic tab. Hit the start button. And that should be spinning right now. It's round and round and round we go, but it's not, so here we are. So, with that said, we're looking at a high probability or possibility of a broken belt, which is an easy thing to fix. I've done it many a time, so follow along and I'm going to show you how to change this belt out. So here you see the tools of the trade. You got your little scraper here. You got a Phillips head bit. And you got this uh, 5 16 bit on this driver right here. And that should be most of the tools we're going to need for this operation. We'll probably pull out the uh, shop vac and clean the inside while we got everything open. And let's not forget the first move is to unplug the dryer. Remove the power source from the dryer. That's the first thing we're going to do. So let's get to it. So the first thing I've done is I've pulled my dryer out a little bit away from the wall to expose the plug right there, which we are going to unplug to make sure there's no power going to this unit. Voila. Power has been removed. We're just going to put this plug on to the side somewhere. Out of the way. Our next move is going to be to remove the uh, lint trap here. Get this, put that out of the way. And you see you got two screws right here, Phillips head screws. We're going to get those off first. So, pardon me while I grab the tools. And we'll get to it. So, like I said, the first thing we want to do is remove these two screws after we've removed the lint trap. Got your driver. A Phillips head bit on it. Reverse. Put your hardware in a safe place. Two screws are out. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is you want to take your scraper. You want to put it right in here and push in. There's a little tab in there. Boom. See that? Want to do the same on the other side? Just push in, pull up. See? Make sure your machine is pulled out far enough where you can open this top. And then we will proceed to open the top. Now your next move is going to be to take this little, pull this tab up and pull out. Tab up, pull out, separate these two. And then we'll move on to the next step is you got two 5 16 head screws that hold the front face on this. So you're going to get this in your driver and go to work. All right, so you get your driver here, remove one screw. Remove another screw. And then your uh, front face is ready to come off. Let me make sure I got the right angle 
and I will show you how to take this off. I can see our belt too, it's right here. Is it broken or is it not? We will see shortly. All right, y'all, so what I've done is I've removed the two little clips that the screws go into on both sides. I went ahead and took those off, put those in my container here. Now I'm gonna push back on the drum and I'm gonna pull up on this because there's two little hooks down here that hold the face plate in on the bottom. Push on the drum, lift on the face, and voila, we have removed it. And you can just let your drum kind of hang there. So here we have it, the moment of truth. Is it a broken belt or is it not? We shall soon find out. And voila, there it is. Broken belt indeed. That's why we have no spin. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna push back on the drum and then just slide it on out. Lift up a little bit and bring it right on out. Just like that. Move this to the side somewhere. And there we have it. See all that mess? A lot of that is from the belt itself. A lot of little debris. This here is our tensioner, but with no belt. The tensioner seemed to just fall off right there. Now we're going to take our shop vac and try to clean up all this mess here. You want to make sure your wheels right here are good. Wheels right here are good. You want them spinning freely. That one's not. So we can break it in a little bit. All right, so we got our shop vac in hand. And we're going to clean all that up now. Let the games begin. And we're back. So you can see, a lot cleaner than we were a few moments ago. I cleaned up real good. I even cleaned up those and even, uh, even try to suck up stuff from the lint trap vent there. Let's get as clean as you can. Clean the little motor and everything. Move the wheels around, make sure everything moves. Just clean it up as good as possible. Get everything out of there. You see our tensioner laying there. Clean that up a little bit too. Make sure the wheel spins freely. And now it's back to uh, putting everything together. But first we got to replace it with a new belt. And let me show you what I get. So here's our new belt. And as you can see by all the packaging I have laid out here, it's evident I've done this a few times. You can order these belts off of Amazon. They're real common belts. They're common to a lot of different dryers, not just the Amana. You can get the number right here off the, uh, off the unit. I'll show you it's on the face that we took off. I'll pull that up in just a second. But yeah, many different part numbers associated with this belt, but uh, get your part number off your dryer and then look for it on Amazon or wherever you go. It's a real common belt. Back to what I was saying about the face and the part number. You can find that part number right here on your dryer. This one here is a model number NED4600YQ1. Just look that up and you'll find your belt. All right, y'all, here comes the fun part, putting the tensioner and the belt and the drum and everything back together. Once you get your belt, new belt out of the package, I say it's wise to stretch it out a little bit, so I just pulled it apart, you know, just stretch it out a little bit. Then you can get your uh, tensioner here. It's got a little, couple little prongs right here and this part right here. Which are going to go, the prongs will go on this side. First, you'll slide the, the flat part in here, and the prongs will sit in here. So, something like this. Slide that in, and the prongs will sit in the back side. Now, how this is going to work, when we put the drum in here, the belt is going to go all the way around the drum. On the bottom here, you can see this, this belt. It's going to go in through here, under the tensioner, in through here, 
around this little spindle here for the motor and then this will go all the way around the belt I'm sorry the drum kind of tricky but let's see if we can get it done alright y'all so what I've done is I've put my belt around the drum and I'm basically carrying the drum with one hand and holding it by the belt in the other hand I'm going to slide it on in here make sure you put this uh, furry side in or else it's going to try to sit on top of the wheels around that outside you'll know it's You'll know where it's supposed to go when it sits. It should be flush with that ring around the outside. Now you got your belt on it. And what we'll do next is go underneath. And I'm gonna try to get you a better angle on some light so you can see what I'm doing with the belt and the tensioner down there. And you remember, you want your belt with the flat side facing up and the, the lines on the inside facing the drum. Those will come in handy right here when you get to the uh, the spindle. So let me try to get you a better angle and we'll just leave our, our drum here. It'll hold there for a moment. Alright y'all so here we are on the bottom side. Let's get our there we, go. we got your tensioner in place. This is our spindle right here where the belt seems to go around. Now to do this I gotta lay flat on my stomach. Sorry if I knock the camera out the way, but this part can be tricky. You got your belt here. You want the rigid side facing in. It's kind of loose here, so it's kind of weird. Put our tensioner back in. What we're going to do here is we're going to put our belt over the wheel, then under right here. I don't know if you can see that. Let me get some light. So what we've done, got your belt and your tensioner. You can go over the wheel and then you see how I'm sticking it through there. See where my finger's at? Now I'm going to take this belt from in here and pull it until it goes around that spindle. And there it is. Voila. See how the belt is wrapped around the spindle? It goes down the drum, over here, in here, wrapped around that spindle. And it'll work kind of like that. Now, once we got that installed, what we're going to do is spin the drum around a few times just so it'll settle into place. And then once we got the, got the belt and everything settled in real nice, uh, we'll begin to put this thing back together. So I hope you uh, were able to see that. So yeah, now that we got the drum and the belt on, we're just going to put the, the drum in its place. And give it a few spins, try to line this belt up. You can see on the top of the drum where this belt lines up. Spin it by hand and let the belt work itself into its position. You can feel the belt's got some nice tension on it. That's a good thing. Sometimes they feel a little looser. It is rotating, rotating. Letting everything work itself up into position. About three turns ought to do. Let's go down below and make sure our belt and pulley and everything still in position. Yep, everything looks fine. So now we'll proceed to put the front cover on. I know I told y'all in the beginning there were some hooks on the bottom here. That's one of them. And that's another one right there. It's kind of hard to see, but they are little hooks. And they will go right here. This is the inside. Here's the other side. Right here. So those hooks will hook on those holes. 
when we put the front on it. All right, this can be tricky at times, but once again, push your drum back. What you want to do, line this right up and get your hooks in place first. Boom, got one. Go another one, just kind of feel it, feel it out. Now that you got your hooks in place, your bottom is secure. You want to get these little clips that we took off earlier. You put them right back on. And these clips will be where your uh, screws screw into the old front face. One on each side. Pop right on. Make the holes align. And then you will get your, uh, your two screws. And put them back in. It's your 516 driver. The screw. Put that back in. One more screw. There you go. Now the face is back on. Your drum is on, your belt is on, your tensioner's on, everything's on. Spin it around a little bit. Everything should be in place, so it should be all good. Now I just wanted to get up here and give you all a top view. There's the clips I was talking about and the screw. Yeah. There's our belt. There's a part number for our belt right there. So we can focus, that'd be nice. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's a part number for the belt. Here. Is the other uh, little clip and the screw, and there's our connection which we must make next. So that's our next move. Connect those two. Just want to get you a little side of what's up top. See how everything worked out. All right, like I just said, our next move is going to be connect these two. It's pretty uh pretty easy you just slide this one into that one and bam here the click you're good tuck those in and we're on to bigger and better things next up we'll drop the top make sure they clip in there's a little clips right there you see that one there and that one right there yep that's where our top's going to clip into so that's going to be our next thing Let's drop the top on this bad boy. Uh, it is on. <clears throat> Excuse me, let me clear my throat. <clears> throat> As I was saying, it's time to drop the top on this bad boy. Make sure it clips on these two little clips here. Bring it down. Boom, boom. We're almost done, y'all. We're almost done. The next step is going to be to put the two screws right there where the limp trap goes. Alright, so here we are. If you want to focus your attention right here and right here, you want to align your limp trap housing there just a little bit so the holes line up right here. Once you got them fairly aligned or perfectly aligned, get your screws. Hold on to them though, you don't want them falling in there. Nice and smooth. nice and smooth there you go now you can put your lint trap back in uh, like so alright and that seals the deal it's back together and now it's time to plug this bad boy in and give it a test run so let's do that as you can see I've plugged it back in so we're powered up. So now the only thing we gotta do is push it back into position. Push it back a little bit. And let's get this thing a test run. Let's fire it up and see what it does. Alright y'all, everything's back in position. Everything's plugged in. Everything's buttoned up. It's time to test this bad boy out. Let's see what the dealio is. Castilio. So let me set my timer. 
Let me open the door here so we can see and hit this magic button here and voila. As you can see, we got rotation now. Problem solved. And that's how we do it. Thank you all once again for joining me on this uh, episode of Joe Fix It Vids. Be sure to stop by the channel, like, subscribe, show some love, leave a comment, say hi, whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? Stop by and say something. Uh, be on the lookout for part two of this video because there are more issues with this dryer. I just addressed one right now. And you, you can see, as you can see, it was a success. So, stay tuned. Until the next time, you know what it is.